Hello everyone and welcome to a new album listening party on my channel. The first one in 2013, I want to say. Uh, 2023 it is, finally. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one as well as the other ones I've did before. I've done, I've did before, I've done before. My tongue. Um, this time I'm gonna listen to an album that I haven't listened to in ages. Even though I still think I know quite a bit of it, you know, the majority of it, I guess. So we'll see and find out. And I'm I'm Transparent Dave, by the way, as you can see. Dave the Transparent, that is my name, ladies and gentlemen, everyone. Sorry for the uh, postponed beginning of the stream. Uh, Bok Fuck Nozzle is here and Tiffany is here. Hi. Hi guys and girls, and Berengeri is here. Hello, I'm so happy to be able to join. I'm happy that you are here too, you know. Thanks for being here. Mm. So, today, it's uh, time for some more Neue Deutsche Härte, New German Heaviness or Hardness, however you want to translate Härte, Die Härte, right? And it's an album that is somewhat, it, it's somewhat special, historically speaking, you know, for me personally, because it was one of the first albums of that kind that I listened to, apart from Rammstein, of course. Umberto Borges, hi! And Lorenzo Ruot Ruotolo. Hello! Thanks for tuning in. Glad that you're here. And of course, Dalemaki. I think. Uh, hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I won't really talk too much in, you know, or between the actual start of the stream and the listening party itself. Uh, that is why we are going to switch to this. Hi. Ich mag deinen neuen Look. Is that so a new look? I don't know. Do I have a new look? I don't know. It's uh, me getting grayer and uh, older and everything. I don't. Maybe that is my new look. I don't know. Um, Alexander Bielenko, a classic album. Uh, that is true. Yeah, in the genre itself, I think you know, f in terms of German metal music from the two thousands, I would definitely count this one as a classic by now, you know, um, in a way, especially for the genre and also considering that Umf came before Rammstein. Many people don't know that, I, I don't think, uh, and many people assume that Umf and, you know, other bands copied Rammstein's style, whereas in fact, it was the other way around. And, you know, not saying copying in a bad way, just stating that, you know, Umf were among the first in the German scene that basically merged this or that came up with this crossover style with electronica, electronic music and heavy guitar driven music. And they were one of the first ones in Germany to do that back in the late 80s. Even though back then, you know, for the first, I think, two, three ish albums, they were still quite electronic, um, electronically driven and it was all only later, like mid-90s, I guess, early 90s, mid-90s, uh, with albums like Wunschkind, for instance, you know, or uh, Defect, Sperm, you know, those albums that they increasingly became heavier and increasingly implemented distorted guitars into their music, you know. So, Electronic body music, right? That is EBM. That is the abbreviation for that. That was basically the style of their early albums up until they introduced the metal influence. Because they were also, like Rammstein basically, influenced by Pantera and the like, you know, American heavy metal bands first and foremost. Uh, of course, you know, the British scene. Um, so that is where they come from. They've, they were founded in 1989 and 
as I said before, um, it's important to note that R Rammstein came after Umf. And in fact, Rammstein, as far as I can tell, and as far as I've read from interviews throughout the years, uh, the Rammstein guys openly admit that they were heavily influenced by Umf, among other bands, you know, of that time. Um, and of course, among American bands as well. So they definitely, de definitely played a role in all of that. Um, I'm very lucky because it would have been very difficult for me to be here at 7.30. Then you were really lucky, yeah. Originally, I wanted to start the stream an hour earlier, uh, but I couldn't do that. Um, so, yeah, still had some stuff to do, you know. Um, and, yeah, this album is love. Liebe. And, you know what? I think that term, that very noun... Die Liebe, a feminine term, may be mentioned throughout the album quite a lot. Because that is defi definitely something that I um, remember. <laughs> you know, even though, as I've said before, I haven't really listened to the album as a whole in quite a while, a few years. But I still think I know most of it. Still. Because it was so influential for me personally, in my m musical taste, you know, back in the day, back in 2004, when... Wahrheit oder Pflicht was released. And talking about that, the album's title, of course, translates to Truth or Dare. There's an, ev uh, an even, there's an even, there's even an English version of the album, which is titled exactly that, Truth or Dare, which basically is the English translation of the album's title. Translate literally, it would be Die Wahrheit for the truth. And Dare would be something like, you know, um, or maybe I should go the other way around. Uh, Pflicht, die Pflicht, is the obligation. You know, you have to do something. So it's truth or obligation, translated literally. Um, and of course, it um, refers back to the, you know, children's game or game in general that you can play with your friends, you know, where you basically spin a bottle and uh, then you go like truth or dare. I guess you know that game. Um, and in a way, I, I'm i wondering if I, you know, it's not, it's not officially, I don't think it's not officially like a concept album necessarily, where each song is connected to one another. Um, but I think there runs, there is a certain, you know, red line running through the songs, thematically speaking. We'll see about that in just a minute. And of course, um, yeah, I'm I'm really, really, really stoked. As per usual with my album listening parties, out of copyright reasons, I can't play the actual music in this live stream, but don't you worry at all. Some of you know the drill. Um, the only way to make sure that this stream will remain online or this recording at the end of the day, sadly, is that we will do it this way. In the video description down below and in the chat in a few seconds, you will find links to the albums or to the album on different streaming providers. Of course, if you have it on CD, you can play it as well or vinyl or whatever. Um, and we're going to listen to it. We're going to start each song synchronized. I'm going to count you in, you know, three, two, one, play. Then we're going to hit play. And you can always see where I'm at within the song down here there and which song is playing over here that is one thing I hope that's okay I know it's not the best solution I know it would be way better to actually play the music uh, in the stream recording but I don't want to have certain album listening parties online and others offline or even blocked because that is still a thing on YouTube and uh, no I don't want to risk that to be honest um, as I've said before, I know it's not the perfect solution, but I guess it's the more or less the best way to be able to, you know, experience the album together. Um, that being said, we're also going to listen to, first of all, let me rephrase this. There are multiple versions of the album, apparently, which is also something that I just learned about. Wasn't really, um, you know, I knew that there was an English version. But I didn't know that there were like two or three different 
German versions of this album. For instance, there's one version of this album that features Burn Your Eyes, the song Burn Your Eyes, instead of Brennen Liebe, which is this track right here. And there are certain album versions which don't feature Eisbär, which is a cover version by, um, well, basically covering the German Neue Deutsche Welle Band, New German Wave Band, uh, Grauzone, 80s band, or I think maybe even late 70s. And we're not going to listen to this song because not all the streaming providers actually have this song. And we're neither going to be listening to um, the uh, Burn Your Eyes version. We're going to listen to the version with Brennende Liebe on it, which is the new version. You know, that's the official title, I think. Uh, you know, don't be confused because you can find the uh, links the links to the albums in the video description and I'm gonna post that into the chat real quick for you guys give me a second and then we're gonna start I think really 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 looking forward to this I have a few memories and of course uh, you know it's it's a reaction so I'm definitely gonna be talking above the songs as well even though I tried to do it not too much but you know finding the right balance with that is sometimes a bit difficult and of course you know after each song we're gonna pause for a moment I'm gonna talk a bit about the German title of the song you know maybe one or two lines that stand out and what they mean in English and those things you know what I think about the songs and uh, then we're gonna proceed on to the next song just so you know um, that's how we're gonna do it. Um, let's see. Um, because not all album versions do have Brennende Liebe on it, I know it's a bit complicated with this one, but I'm sorry. Um, I also provided you with um, separate links to Brennende Liebe, the song itself, um, for certain streaming versions of this album. So... Oops, that's too long, actually. Uh, I'm sorry. Like this. This is the first part, and this is the second part. Like I said before, you can also find all those links in the video description. Um, so, I think, without further ado, let's get this started. Oops. Finish the music like that. And I'm gonna, where is it? I think I have the same version as you, Dave. Uh, I'm not too sure which version I had back in the day, but I think it was this one, actually. I think, even though it says, you know, this is basically the new version, um, I think this is the version that I had, or that I still have on CD, the CD that I bought in 2004 when this album was released. And one more thing before I'm gonna start. It's the eighth album of Umf, which is strange considering this is the first album which or with which they really broke through into the mainstream. Not to say that they became a mainstream band by any means, you know, um, definitely not, but they certainly had their biggest success so far with this album, uh, with songs like Augen auf, which is gonna be the first song on the album, which is also a segue into starting the uh, album listening party. Brennen die Liebe and Eisberg, yes. Um, so, I hope you're ready, guys. Um, Dave, you are so lucky to hear it for the first time. It's great. Uh, Berangerie, I've already listened to the album. I know the album, but I haven't really listened to it in quite a while. You know, I already know the album because I bought it in 2004 when it was released because I basically became a fan of the band and basically found out about the band through Augen Auf. Uh, as many others, you know, many of my peers uh, actually did back in the day because it was, it did receive quite a lot of airplay uh, on radio and on German TV. So um, I know the album, you know, full disclosure. It's not gonna be a first listen, but um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I misread. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bérangerie. Uh, I misread uh, Dale and Dave. Yeah, my brain. is mushy. Uh, I'm old. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Excuse moi. Uh, okay. Hope you're ready, because I sure am. So, like I said before, I'm gonna count you in, you know, three, two, one, play for each song. And then we're gonna, oh, I have to actually change the, uh, the audio source real quick. Like that, and I have to get rid of the uh, fire crackling, which I sometimes play when I edit videos because it's so soothing. Don't know if you do something like that, you know, uh, but I like the sound of fire crackling when I do something really chill or when I work on videos, for instance. Uh, it's, it's a little king that I have. Okay, okay. Let me have my kings. Um, anyway, that's it. That will be the start of the full album listening party stream thingy for Umf's Wahrheit oder Pflicht. And the first song is gonna be Augen auf. And it sounds like this. In 3, 2, 1, play. This beginning alone, you know. So iconic. And that bass. Love it. The sound of it. I like how subtle the vocals are, you know, in terms of two voices basically singing together. Very light, high one. Which you can especially hear here in the last term of each line. Ich weiß, was du verlangst. Englisch. Classic song. Classic modern German metal song, I think. I like when Dero, the previous singer, um, goes into the almost growling voice. Doesn't do that so often, but when he does, it sounds really, really cool. And the little piano accents. Really, really nice touch. Also adding, you know, a dramatic feel to it. That's scream, you know. Love it. He should have done that more often, I think, because it sounds cool and it fits the style. That little break always got me as a child or teen, adding the tension. Nicht. Oh yeah. Dun, 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 dun. And stop. That was Augen auf by Umf, the first track of the album Wahrheit oder Pflicht. 
and it's a perfect opener for this album. You know, when I compare it to what I remember of the other songs, I think this one is definitely one of the most obvious and one of the most clever sounding openers because it basically includes everything that you love about this band and even if you don't know the band and most people frankly speaking when this came out that got to know the band through this album they of course did know the band before so this was their introduction to maybe not only this band but also to this style of music if they hadn't heard of Rammstein say for instance you know and considering all of that I think Augen auf is a smart opener it is damn catchy it is short and simple you know don't borrow us get to the chorus it's basic it's 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 a simple song i think well done because simple doesn't have to equal you know oh it's um you know uncreative or it it doesn't really it isn't of a high quality doesn't mean anything you know but it is simple in a very, very good way, definitely. And it's, of course, you know, it's also the song that is the most standout song on the album because it's the most well-known one. And I don't think it's even still to this day, I think, it's their most known and most popular song for a good reason. Because it's not only the song itself, but it's also the music video, which really captured the mood of the song, I think. You know, this mysteriousness and... What's funny about this is that it's it's an easy, you know, it's a simple idea, basically. It's truth or dare, um, or in this case, hide and seek, the, the game hide and seek, you know. Um, I'm going to close my eyes, and you guys will hide, you know, and I'm going to count to ten, and that is what happens in the song, you know, in the pre-chorus. I'm going to count to ten, and then I'm going to say, Augen auf, ich komme, you know. Literally speaking, eyes open, I'm coming. I'm looking, I'm gonna look for you now, I'm gonna be looking for you. Um, so it's it's simple, it's basically a ch children's game, but mis mystified, you know? And the music video encapsulates that perfectly, I think. It's with the slightly distorted and um, tilted camera angles. If I don't know if you know the music video, but if you don't know, and if you like the song, definitely, uh, make sure to check it out. It's it's great, I think. It's it suits the song very well, um, and you know it's yeah, I love it. The atmosphere in this song is so fascinating. Berangerie says yes, and it's also the subtleties. Once again, it's a simple song, but they managed to include a few subtleties. One of them being what I try to mention throughout the song. Uh, at the end of every line in the verses, there is. Dero's normal singing voice, you know, the rather low singing voice, but there's also a higher pitched, really low, um, or like quiet, I should rather say, um, singing voice that's mixed over it, which almost is like whispery and it makes everything sound even more dramatic. And what's also really adding to the uh, dramaticness is, is that even a term? I don't know, to the drama, <laughs> uh, mysterious drama of the song is that the piano, the single piano notes in the chorus, for instance, or at the end and in the pre-chorus, you know, it's 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 not like it's dung dung. It's very delicate. It's very only single notes being played, and that adds so much atmosphere. I think it's it's such a you know. Once again, I have to stress that because. The first thing that you would actually, or that you may think is when you hear, you know, oh, it's a simple song, or oh, that isn't something, you know, positive. I think in this case, it's something very positive. It's simple, but effective. And I've said that in my previous f full album listening re reaction streams videos uh, before, and it also applies to this album, I think, largely. Simple doesn't mean it's bad. Sim simple when it's done great is, I think, an art in its own right. I, you know, I don't know if you know or if you understand what I mean by that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, even the lyrics, you know, not the most complicated lyrics by any means, 
but v extremely effective for what the song wants to convey, I think. This and Rammstein's song had taught me how to count in German. Shadow, Cake Lord, hi, thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, see, and that is also really cool. Um, Sonne by Rammstein and Augen auf by Oomph. Great songs, even though, you know, I would say Oomph is even better in that case because Rammstein leave out the 10, the 10. Um, so here you have the 10, the 10, you know. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, I could say many more things about this song. Won't do it here because I've already done that in a previous video, um, which is exactly about the song, the German lyrics, and what they translate to in English, and how the German version compares to the official English version of the song, Ready or Not, I'm Coming, um, which I've compared it to, you know, so... You can find that on my channel as well if you're interested in that and finding out more about that learning German with oomph. And that, the pause is on point, yes, but that was more luck than skill, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, it's true. Um, and I guess, you know, I I'm glad that you seem to like it as well. Um, let's listen to a song now, song number two. But first of all, Fred Rifle or Rif Riffle? I think. Um, awesome. Don't ever quit. You are appreciated. And that is much appreciated, Fred. And all you guys, of course, you know, not just being here, but also supporting the channel by liking, by sharing, by subscribing, or by becoming a member on Patreon, for instance, you know, that is great, great, great help. And of course, much appreciated. So, vielen Dank. That being said, um, let's continue with song number two. Thousand Neue Lügen, and I remember the beginning of the song to be something that was really, you know, that like punch in the gut, um, really, really powerful sounding, getting to the core, you know, to the meat of the song right away, in a way. Great riff as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I want to listen to the song right now. I really want to listen to the song because I think, yeah, it's... Also another really, really cool song. Uh, okay, so next up is Tausend Neue Lügen in 3, 2, 1, play. Also left and right, you know, little detail here. Silence and then... Boom. Sounds so brutal. Also the guitar production. The gnarly bass. <laughs> Playing with a few dissonant elements here and there. I love the chorus in this, you know, the low, whoa. almost monk-like singing. Very stomping rhythm, but the guitars do the work here. I also like how Dero intonates all the consonants. Very art articulate. I love this pre-chorus. 
and the chorus. Bang, 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 bang. Once again, the piano. Simple notes. I think, you know, this style of singing that he does right now in the post-chorus is something that Dero did more on earlier albums, you know, with this style in comparison to more recent albums. But I like it. It's, a, it's another touch. pa dum pa pa I also like the vibrato in his voice. Very natural and very rich sounding, I think. Once again, the, the choir, you know. Oh. Oh. And the ending, so cool, so unique in a way, you know. And stop. Once again, perfect pause. And I'm really sorry, guys. I totally forgot to actually translate a bit of uh, Augen auf, of course. I was so looking forward to listening to the second song that I totally forgot to mention all of that. I'm really sorry, but we're gonna do it right now before we're gonna move in. Uh, to Tausend neue Lügen. Of course, you know, Augen auf translates to eyes open, literally speaking, or you could also say open your eyes, which would be the more accurate translation. Um, in this case, you know, it's basically self-reflective because the lyrical eye says, as I've said before, they count to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then they say Augen auf, ich komme, you know, they have their eyes closed, then they count to 10, and after, or once they've reached 10, they open their eyes and they look for everyone who has hidden, you know, because they're playing hide and seek, literally speaking. Uh, of course, you can also interpret this as, you know, something more sinister and something more um, maybe emotional, you know, in a way. Um, but that is the, the basic outline of the song. Uh, and it's Das Auge. Singular, die Augen, plural, the eye, you know. Uh, of course, a very, very classic line in any Umf song is Eckstein, Eckstein, alles muss versteckt sein. Cornerstone, cornerstone, everything must be hidden. That is the literal translation. Yes. And I don't think the cornerstone itself, you know, the, the object, has any significance in this necessarily. It's just that it rhymes and it makes for a cool and recognizable rhyme. Eckstein, Eckstein, alles muss versteckt sein. It's a children's rhyme. Once again, you know, taking that up, the children's element merged with a more maybe adultish mysteriousness, you know. Um, yeah. So Augen auf, ich komme means, you know, I'm opening my eyes. I'm coming for you. You know, I'm 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 gonna find you. I'm gonna be looking for you right freaking now. You know, um, that's the uh, aspect to Augen auf that I wanted to mention. But now, excuse me, let's proceed on to Tausend neue Lügen, which translates to a thousand new lies. There's a lot of lies, actually. Many lies, in fact, because you can count them, of course. Because if you couldn't count them, it would be much lies, but it's many lies. Because it's a thousand. Thousand or ein thousand. One thousand. Um, that's that. And I'm um, gonna post the stuff that I mentioned into the uh, chat real quick for you guys concerning Augen auf, 
so that you can copy paste it if you want. Uh, once again, thousand neue Lügen, a thousand new lies, which once again, a lot of lies. And it's die Lüge, singular, die Lügen, plural, the lie. And thousand, a thousand. It, it's basically similar uh, in terms of the sound and everything. Thousand, a thousand, you know, very similar actually. And yeah, it's an interesting song, musically speaking, but also lyrically speaking, I think. Musically speaking, because as, as I've said before, it has a, a few unique elements to it, which is basically like the, the monk monks singing, you know, Mongolian singing. I won't, count, won't really call it that because it's not like throat singing, but it's... Um, it's I love that type of singing, you know, and that style especially when it's merged and combined with heavy music in this instance, for instance. In this instance, for instance. Um, it always made the song stand out to me on the album. And this song, once again, also shows how awesome the guitar production is for this style of music. Now, I don't think that this the sound of the guitars would work that well in some other heavy styles of, you know, like, or guitar driven music necessarily. Because it's, you know, very much focusing on the higher frequencies in the mix. Um, but it's damn heavy. It's damn heavy. And also the key sample, yeah, as Umberto uh, basically says, uh, the key samples also make this one unique. I think so too. And this is also something that they have in common with. Umf, uh, with Rammstein um, because I think both bands really managed or still manage to come up with unique sounding and new synth sounds every time they release an album you know Flake very good example the uh, keyboard player of Rammstein he still you know eight albums in he still manages to come up with new unheard of key sounds here and there and that always fascinates me a whole lot so yeah i like when bands still use you know when they when they stay true to their style but the, when they still manage to incorporate new elements in terms of sounds or qualities you know tonal qualities i always appreciate that quite a lot if I remember rightly, I think Eckstein, Eckstein means cornerstone, cornerstone. Never really understood that bit. Yeah, uh, as I said before, I think it's just for the sake of, you know, having a nice little rhyme. It's a ch children's rhyme, you know. So, um, and of course, you know, a very fundamental line in this song is, Wenn du wirklich willst, dann wirst du in dich gehen. Und du wirst tausend neue Lügen sehen, you know. It's basically, it seems to be about, a, you know, some pretender. Someone who pretends to do something or to be something that they are not. And they lie to the other person. And they want to drag them onto their side. But the lyrical eye is confronting them in a way, you know. Um, alles wird mit dir vergehen. Everything will be over with you. Um, so it's it's a courageous song I guess you could say because it's basically focusing that it's the lyrical eye that saw through the intentions and the bad intents of the other person the liar the pretender you know therefore tausend neue Lügen a thousand new lies still you know each day coming up with new lies and um trying to basically gain more influence by telling those lies over and over again and coming up with new ones, you know, on the fly. So very, 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 very cool song, also lyrically speaking, because there are many people out there like that, I think. If you really want to, you will go inside yourself and you will see a thousand new lies. Yes. With that being said, Let's continue with song number three, I'd say. Wenn du weinst. 
I vaguely re remember this as well, I think. Yes. So, let's continue with this one in 3, 2, 1, play. Different, you know, distorted sounds. So cool. Also very Nine Inch Nails-like, I think. Trent Reznor, production stylish. And Dero definitely knows how to sing in a very extravagant way, you know, extroverted way, expressive way, for, uh, you know, little rawness and raspiness in his voice. Also, once again, the vi that, that vibrato. Very versatile singer. Love the guitar work in the chorus. Also, you know, start and stop rhythms. And counterpoint, you know, playing. Going against the main rhythm. And causing tension, you know, and propelling the song forward. Uh, great style. By the way, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's also Dero, who's actually a drummer as well, who also plays drums on, or played drums on the albums. So emotive the way he sings. Such a classy voice. For this style. I think he would be a great swing-ish or jazzy singer as well. Also very quiet in the mix on the right side. Especially, there's a little... Oh. I like how they really managed to find a good balance between electronic sounds and metal. Especially, you know, on this album and the albums that came after it. I also like the sound of the guitars in this solo. It's not really common to have a solo in too many oomph songs, I don't think. Also, you know, when du weinst, using the W at the beginning of those words. Very explicitly. And stop. Uh, what I last said, you know, a um, few seconds ago is this is also a good example of a song that really makes use of the combined sound of similar consonants, you know. 
Warum will ich dich nur, wenn du weinst? Lots of V sounds, you know, which is the German W. Warum will ich dich nur, wenn du weinst? It really has a nice flow to it in itself, you know, even though it doesn't rhyme, but the sound is the same. And the way he manages to come up with those similar um, and recurring details, especially in the chorus, makes this chorus really, really cool, I think, in my book. Um, that is also another thing, you know, it's, it's not only the choice of words, but it's also um, the way to intonate them, to make them sing on their own, you know, and sound on their own. Uh, because, of course, you could also say, warum will ich dich nur, wenn du weinst? And you, you still would have a little bit of this, v -v -v, you know, the similarity in the consonant W here, the German V. But Dero, in all the three songs that we've listened to so far, and basically any other oomph song, he is great, I think, at really articulating certain elements of words and make them sound or shine even more and even brighter um, than they would shine when you just like s would speak them in daily German. And considering it's like in the context of a song, which is quite expressive in its own right, you know, as an art form, I think that's a great choice. So, yeah. Wenn du weinst, when you cry. It's a, it's a nice song, even though also a bit evil-ish, I guess you could say, because um, it seems to be or it could be about someone who likes their significant other or the the person that they love only when they cry, you know, when they feel hurt or when they are sad. Warum bist du so schön, wenn du weinst? Why are you so beautiful when you cry? And the increased form of it, what I just mentioned a few seconds ago, Warum will ich dich nur, wenn du weinst? Why do I only want you when you cry? And because I like it so much, I'm gonna make you cry very often. You know, it's uh, it's quite toxic. Yeah, the song itself could be interpreted as pre being pretty toxic. And of course, you know, I don't think they mean it seriously in the sense of that they um, appreciate that behavior or uh, even promote that or something. Uh, it's just, you know, as artists, they deal with those topics, you know, uh, toxic relationships and those things in a really abstract way. And once again, we have to remember this counts not only for Oomph, but also for many other artists in general um, with, you know, lyrics. Just because Diego is singing the lyrics doesn't mean that he is the person in the song, you know, that he is the lyrical I. Um, das lyrische Ich, which basically is the person acting in the song, you know, and telling the story. Even though he wrote that, doesn't mean that he actually approves of that or that he himself thinks that way. We have always, you know, we, we always have to keep that in mind. With music uh, because I think sometimes people have a tendency to merge those two things and sometimes they you know there are many songs by many artists that are quite uh, autobiographical of course but many songs if not the vast majority isn't you know technically you could write a song about depression or a person with depression even though the songwriter itself isn't depressing yeah um, isn't um, depressed, you know, or feeling depressed, you know, suffering from depression at all. Technically, that's possible. So it doesn't have to be the same, which doesn't take away from, you know, the, the quality of the lyrics because they are really drastic and direct. But in being that, especially in the chorus, I think, it's, it's thought-provoking. To me, it's thought-provoking. And to you, you know, you guys seem to think the same. Shadow Cake Lord says, Neither have I, but damn, I love that solo now. Yeah, the solo. 
they rarely play, and maybe I'm wrong, feel free to correct me, but I, I think Oomph rarely have like overboarding guitar solos in their songs, if at all. So this is pretty rare for Oomph. Um, yeah. It, I, but I like it. I like the so sound of it. It's a very unique sounding guitar in that solo. I think so. Really, really cool. The first half of this album is simply extraordinary, but the whole album is great. It's you know the it's a great great beginning to the album. Like the first three songs in all killer, no filler, to me personally. Um, so let's continue with um, song number four. Uh, Sex hat keine Macht. But before we're gonna do that, of course, before I forget, a little. Slipknot reference, no, but what I mean before I forget to actually post the stuff into the chat once again, I'm sorry. Um, weinen is to cry. When can either be temporal, when something happens, you know, or it can also be conditional in the sense of if something happens, when. But in this case, it's temporal, I think, you know, I only like you when you cry or whenever you cry. Um, ich lass dich nie wieder los. Once again, very toxic, very drastic. I will never let you go. Ich lass dich nie wieder los. Warum bist du so schön, wenn du weinst? Why are you so beautiful when you cry? Good question. <laughs> Why? Tell me. Um, especially when the music makes you feel all the f these feelings through the musical composition. See? And that is a sign of great art, I think. Uh, Berangeret agrees with Umberto, and he says, art is about life and its aspects. I agree with you, and, ladies and gentlemen, everyone, I agree with you too, guys. Guys as well. Um, yeah, so let's continue with song number four. Sex hat keine Macht by Umf. In three, two, one play and I think there was a different version of the song for the single or like a different beginning of the song it, I think it sounds a bit different if I'm not mistaken also like the the rhythm of this and the snare work. Ha! Huh. Really raspy and throaty. It's the perfect voice for this style of music. I also really, really like the chord progression in the, so uh, in the song itself, but also in the chorus, and especially this part. <laughs> Vocal melody, on point. And once again, like a little solo, actually. So raspy. <laughs> so intense. Yeah, I believe you. I believe you, Dero. I believe you. Also nice use of some reverb. Mm -hmm. 
Nice little touch there. It's especially this second part of the chorus that I really, really like a lot. And another solo coming in. I think. Yep. The sound of this solo reminds me of Porcupine Tree and Stephen Wilson-ish playing. High and distorted. Almost falsetto and strings even. No. And stop. That was Sex Hat Keine Macht by Umf, and there's definitely another version of the song, a single version, single cut or single edit. Because I remember, and that is why I looked so, you know, um, or I was waiting if it would actually be included in this version or not. But I think in the last chorus, or maybe even the second to last chorus, there is a little ad lib section in there. Sex hat keine Macht. You know, something like that. Um, and that isn't included in this version, which doesn't make this, of course, you know, less in interesting. But I, I always liked that little bit. And once again, to me, the strong suit of this song, n apart from the rhythm, because it's a bit slower, you know, it's a little bit more laid back, but still catchy, is the vocal melody, especially in the chorus. And especially in the second part of the chorus, as I mentioned throughout the song. And also, you know, the, the contrast between low and ha, da, 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 you know, the, the high singing, uh, really, really cool, uh, gives it a certain, you know, tasty flavor. It makes it interesting and intriguing to listen to that. Um, and it also is a great segue into the second part of the chorus with this Da, 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 da. You know, it's a um, yeah, it's it's that's such a little great vocal line, and works perfectly with the sound, you know, sound wise uh, with the words. Um, du blutest nicht genug für mich. Uh, you don't bleed enough for me. Basically, you know, if you wanted to translate it literally. Uh, you're not bleeding enough for me, or you don't bleed enough for me, this nicht genug für mich. It's quite similar. You could actually express that quite similarly um, in English as well, if you wanted to. So, sex hat keine Macht. Sex has got no power. Or sex has no power. For der sex. The sex. And be careful with this because I know you know with sex in general of course but uh, but what I mean is in English you can refer you know when when using the term sex you can refer to of course you know sexual intercourse but you could also refer to a person's gender you know uh, the biological sex uh, so when you have a form to fill out you may see you know sex and then it means, you know, are you male, female, transgender, whatever. Um, in German, though, der Sex, as a noun, is only used for sexual intercourse. It's not used for the gender of a person, the biological gender. Um, so for the gender part of it, you know, the biological gender, we would use das Geschlecht, singular, die Geschlechter, plural. Uh, 
So please keep that in mind. There's a distinction here, linguistically speaking, to be made. Uh, and of course, the other important term in this is die Macht, singular, die Mächte, plural, the power. And once again, a really, really cool and typically umf term or typically dero term. Because, as I said before, he really likes to play with the sound of those, you know, throaty um, diphthongs. Or, you know, it's not really a diphthong in this case because it's two consonants, not two vowels. But um, it's the this vowel combination ch, which um, exists two times, you know, twice in German. There is one light version in ich, for instance, in I, you know, ich. But there's also the more throaty one, which is used here in macht. You know, macht. It's not mach, ma macht, it's macht. Uh, and especially the more throaty version is something that Dero uses quite a lot and stresses quite a lot in songs. And once again, he is a very articulate singer, not only in the choice of words, but also in the way he intonates those, um, those terms. And I guess that is something that you have to tell me as people who are not, you know, native German speakers. I guess to you guys listening to this, maybe from a perspective of not understanding a single word of these lyrics, which is not wrong or, you know, which is not a problem, of course. I guess to you guys that could also be part of the appeal because it sounds cool. And I think the same is true for Rammstein, for instance, you know, Tillinemann does the same, even though I think comparatively he, he relies more on the sound of long vowels as opposed to consonants, with the exception of the R, you know, the trilled R, of course. But apart from that, because it stands out so much, I think it's mostly vowels that he really relies on when it, when it comes to intonating and stressing, verbalizing certain terms in a certain way in certain songs. When it comes to umf, I feel sometimes, maybe I'm wrong, but I, sometimes I feel like it's more about the consonants. Um, and this is another, you know, great example. Even the term sex in itself, you know, s and x, sex. It's a very short e in between. It's not sex, it's sex, you know, which also allows for really articulating the consonants as an x even stronger. So, yeah, it's cool. Once again, du blutest nicht genug für mich. You don't bleed enough for me, which is a, which is a very, very serious uh, <laughs> um, thing to say. Kiss mich noch ein letztes Mal. Kiss me one last time. So, maybe, I, I, I don't know. It could be a song. I haven't really thought about that, to be honest, uh, so much. Um, it could be a song about someone who seems to be caught, once again, in a relationship type of situation, but more on the physical, sexual side of things this time around. And that person replies to the other person, the significant other in the relationship, you know, sex has no power. You can't dominate me with your lust or with your physical uh, domination. Um, maybe. But then again, they also say, du blutest nicht genug für mich, you don't bleed enough for me. Hmm... Hmm. And see, you know, even though I've listened to this song numerous times, I haven't really paid too much attention to the lyrics in depth. I really like the song mostly because of the sound, but I... Um, yeah. But then again, also in the pre-chorus, the um, lyrical eye says, Du hast mein Herz in der Hand. You've got my heart in your hand, you know, in your control. Um and they want to break out of that. I think, yeah, it still applies to what I just said, in a way. Um, that relation. Um, so maybe because they don't feel enough, the lyrical eye might want more involvement. Ha. Ah. 
It isn't. It is intentionally misleading, as in the video. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, it's a long time that I, uh, or when I saw the last, when I saw the video for the last time. I think it's quite religiously inspired as well, isn't it? I think you know it. It implies certain, you know. Like Catholic priests and maybe you know sex and all those things. We all know those stories, sadly. Um, maybe it harkens back to that as well, if I remember correctly. It's been a long time. Uh, anyway, yeah. Once again, another really really cool song. I think adding another flavor to the album. And uh, there was a possession, oh, like a, the Exorcist, basically Exorcismus. Der Exorzismus, the exorcism, and die Besessenheit. Die Besess Besessenheit. The possession. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, I remember. Another song that also features a great music video is the next song, which we're going to listen to. And once again, Feel free to check out the s link to that single song in the video description down below because this song isn't included in all versions of this album, sadly enough. Uh, but on the version we're going to listen to, or we're listening to already, it is included, the new tracklist version. Uh, because we're about to listen to Brennende Liebe featuring Lame Mortel, which is a French-sounding band, but it's, in fact they are Austrian. Uh, and they are more, you know, rather like gothy, gothic, electronica based. Also a little bit, you know, rock and metal influence, but less so, I would say, in comparison. So, and I, I've always been a huge fan of this song, you know, full disclosure. Um, I basically like everything about this. It's a great duet uh, between Dero and... I think her name is Sabine Kraushofer. Yeah. Uh, the red-haired singer of Lame Mortel. Um, I've always... This is, by the way, um, the song because of which or through which I discovered Lame Mortel as a band. And I'm nowhere near an expert when it comes to their music, but I remember having listened to their album Gezeiten, which also was released in 2004. And there are some really cool songs on that album as well. Good Zeiten, for instance, the title track is really, really soothing and cool. Um, okay, now the rest of the album I've never heard. Oh, that's cool. So I hope you're ready. Uh, once again, the song isn't included on all versions of this album. So if you want to make sure to listen along simultaneously, synchronized, use one of the links in the video description if it's not available on your streaming provider or the version of the album at your streaming provider um, that being said I think we're gonna start now hope you're singing hope you're singing yeah reading the chat and speaking at the same time I hope you're ready I wanted to say I hope you're singing yeah but I also hope you're singing of course feel free to sing along <laughs> Um, let's continue with Brennende Liebe featuring Lame Mortel bei Umf in 3, 2, 1, play. Eh. Little delay, maybe half a second, sorry. I love the production of these synths. So exquisite. And the pounding drums. Easily one of the best drum tracks on any Oomph song, I think. Also, the um, stereo field, once again, left and right, playing with those channels. Nice touch. And great combination of the two voices. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. 
single piano notes once again works. Sucht. I love that little guitar break before the chorus. Da dum, da dum. Adds so much tension. And diamond chords, you know, vum, vum, vum. Nice ad lib. I love the percussiveness of the synths as well. Dum 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 and stop. Okay guys. I'm gonna go on record and say that I personally think you know if I had to come up with a top five or maybe let, let's say top ten of oomph songs this one is way up there I don't know if I would say it's my top like my most favorite oomph song but it's damn close up there and for so many reasons it's not not only because it's a duet I would also like if it weren't a duet. Um, but the fact that it is, of course, also makes it special and unique. But I really like the overall production of it and the level of detail in this song. I love the percussiveness of the synths. I love the sound of the synths. Very, very unique. Also... Not, not necessarily like reminding me of Nine Inch Nails, even though to some degree they do. But it's it's just, it sounds so cool. You know, to put it in simple words, it sounds cool. It, it has a unique feel, sound to it. It even, you know, even the synth sounds raspy and gnarly, you know, and out there and trying to get you, you know, the burning burning love basically portraying that as well and okay i guess in a way you know brennende liebe is burning love so definitely works uh, also what i really like is the drum work in the song that goes not to say that i dislike it in other oomph songs but compared to other oomph songs which are don't get me wrong more on the simple side of things when it comes to the drumming I love the the rhythm, the beat, the accents on the drums in this one. And 
the percussiveness once again of them a bit tribal you know the, a bit like a tribal feeling which is also quite unique to this uh, and also i think for the album as a whole if i'm not mistaken quite quite unique um also and that doesn't have anything to do with the song but the music video to this one i remember as being extremely cool as well uh you know touching on the whole frankenstein frankenstein uh story and that arc you know uh and how that came about and basically dero being the crazy professor and trying to create like um his f wife you know i think and or was it that no it wasn't the yeah also the wife i think but also like a, a man there was a man as well like the frankenstein monster in itself um so great great music video great great song once again and i think that's almost a trademark at least on this album for oomph the single piano notes throughout songs just like from the frequency of things they add so much depth and expressiveness i can only repeat myself here but i think it's just cool um so to be honest you know it's yeah it's one of my favorite oomph songs of all time it, and it has aged like fine wine you know it sounds modern in a, in the way that it uses the synths like that and the you know explicit distorted gain heavy heaviness of the guitars and everything but on the other hand it also sounds quite timeless i think you know it, it sounds as fresh today as it sounded in 2004 almost 20 years ago 19 years ago now that it was released more or less and that's crazy <laughs> that is really crazy when you think about it so brennende liebe burning love for brennen to burn or in this case an inflected form of brennend which is the present participle of brennen burning brennend with nd at the end von meiner brennenden liebe kann dich kein dämon erlösen from my burning love no demon can redeem you once again the the heavy the the strong stark desire of the lyrical eye to really um dominate you know once again it's it's not a happy song um i guess you could interpret it as you know basically like an ode to really strong and flowering you know and blooming blossoming love but it really isn't i don't think you know it's it's really um <laughs> love in a exaggerated way let me put it this way uh, very gothic also the music video yeah um von meiner brennenden liebe kann dich kein gott und kein wunder mehr befreien from my burning love no god and no miracle can free you anymore <sighs> love it and you know honestly as i said before there are a few versions of this album a few different track lists but one of the reasons I chose this one, gotta be honest, is that it features this song. <laughs> it's it's quite selfish, I know, but what can you do? Um, yeah. And of course, I also chose this version apart from that because this is another German song and Burn Your Eyes would have been an English song because, you know, wouldn't have made too much sense because this channel is about the German language and culture. Uh, first and foremost, but yeah. Anyway, let's continue with song number six. Six, Dein Weg. I did it your way. You know, Dein Weg, your way. <clears throat> okay, let's hit play in drei, zwei, eins, play.
very stomping. Very high pitched keys, adding a really nice touch, almost percussive once again, like resembling a hi hat. Ooh, very dark sounding chord progression here. This is almost growling, basically. Kalicht, so weiss. Kind of. That's and I love that about this song. It's so guttural. Especially the chorus. Another strong suit of Dero's voice, I think. Also, nice drum pattern here. Deviating from the 4 4 straight pattern. Sounds so brutal. Also, you're welcome, Berangerie. And stop. Dein Weg. Your way by oomph. And I didn't remember the outro of the song, like the coda basically, um, which is really, really cool. It's another interesting... It almost works as a climax in a way. Uh, asking the question, Warum verbirgst du dich? Why do you hide? Or, you know, uh, why don't you, like, shy away from appearing and other people and, you know, all those things. Dein Weg. Hmm. I think what I really like about the song, as I've said before, is how guttural Dero sings the chorus. That is a really standout aspect of the song to me. And it, it's almost provocative, I guess you could say, because to me, it feels like the, the lyrical eye is directly addressing the other person. And that person seems to have to go through, you know, or have to overcome certain obstacles in life or whatever. Um, and the lyrical eye basically disencourages or tries to disencourage them on that way. Dein Weg so weit, niemand der dich befreit. Your way so far, no one to set you free. 
Bist du bereit? Are you ready? And you know, I, the lyrical I, I don't think you are. Um, but, you know, you have to go to great lengths to really get out of your miserable situation, I think, in a way. So, it I guess it's motivational, but it's, it's very dark. <laughs> um, but you could also interpret it as being not so motivational, you know, and that the lyrical eye is actually rather against the other person to really step out of their shadow and set, uh, step out of the lyrical eye's realm of domination, if you will. Um, but maybe I'm, I'm getting this wrong, I don't know. Uh, that is my personal spontaneous take on the lyrics. I like to do that spontaneously for the most part. Uh, so uh, anyway, as I said before, Dein Weg, Your Way. For Der Weg, Singular, Die Wege, Plural. I also like the punch uh, the song packs, but it um, rhymes very mysterious to me. Yes, definitely. Um Once again, you know, I love that in the the chorus, really playing with certain you know accentuations and uh, start stop rhythms, playing with silence as well. I think is is also a strong suit of this band. They do that in every you know every other song. They do that as well. In this song, it's quite obvious, um, you know, the start and stop sound and arrangement adds more tension to it and makes it more interesting, I think. So just found out the version of the album that has Burn Your Eyes on it uh, has another song called Nothing. Yes, I think there's another English song uh, on that. But to be honest, you know, it sounds very purist. In a way it is, but I, I never really cared too much about the other versions of this album, which is also one of the you know, the other reasons why I chose this version. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. Um, Dein Weg so weit. You're away so far. Niemand, der dich befreit. No one to set you free. Bist du bereit? Are you ready? I always have to think of uh, that corn song are you ready ach ja kein licht zu weiß no light too white it's a nice rhyme sounding uh, tone to it and quality to it in its own right in the english translation keine hölle zu heiß no hell too hard das ist der preis that is the price you have to pay you know impl implied Uh, I guess uh, you have to go to through all of those things in order to really get out of your situation, your shadow, your you know the obstacles in your way. Their songs in English are fine, but they can't compare to the originals. I think so too, <laughs> to be honest. You know, I know the English version of "Ready or Not," for instance, "Augen auf," doesn't hold a candle against. The German version. Also because I think, you know, simply for the fact also, and there's one example why I think that, Augen auf, ich komme has a nice ring to it in context of the song, but ready or not, I'm coming. I mean, it works, but this ready or not sounds a little bit sloppy, you know, uh, in comparison. So I definitely enjoy the German original versions more. Yeah. I mean... Call me biased <laughs> in a way because I'm German, but um, yeah. Uh, once again, it's a great song. I don't know if I would call it a standout on the album, to be honest, which is hard to say anyway because there are many great songs on this album. Um, and I don't know if I would actually say that about the next song as well, or either, I should rather say. Um, du spielst Gott. And we're gonna listen to that right now in. Ready? Ready, ready. Drei, zwei, eins, play. Oh, nice flanger effect. 
Love it. In a way, the production reminds me a little bit of Linkin Park, Meteora. You know, light sounding, like really high end, heavily distorted electric guitars and everything. Quite similar. It's a very short verse. And tum, tum, tum. Love that little breakdown in the chorus. Little groove. Also the background vocals, almost like lyrical singing by Dero. Sounds awesome. Once again, you know, start, stop. And great drumming as well. Very energetic this time. I love the synths in this chorus, left and right. Boom, boom, bum, bum. Such an awesome touch and addition to the chorus. Well thought out arrangement. Nice little breakdown. It's a great song, once again. And also similar to the other songs, but still it has some unique, something unique about it. Gonna talk about that in a moment. Oh yeah, right. Nice change toward the end. Very unexpected. And... Stop. Wow, Du Spielst Gott. To be honest, one of my favorites on the album in terms of, you know, it being almost like a hidden gem, like a deep cut. A song, like, it wasn't a single, a song on the album that is very strong. And I think this song in particular benefits from the verses being very short. And then basically having this ping pong relation between the verse and the chorus and the chorus itself is another thing like another beast unleashed what i really like is once again the rhythmic design the rhythmic 
playfulness of the drums and the rhythm correlating with the singing and the sounds and the words especially this du spielst immer wieder Gott mit deiner Macht you know that um, this da 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 uh, this almost, you know, put in simple terms, delayed rhythm, this almost, you know, it almost feels out of touch, you know, in a way, like out of sync, out of of bees in a way, but on purpose, of course. And it adds so much interesting tension, musical tension to the whole thing and I love it and I also love the arrangement choices here because once again they and you notice that throughout the album and also in the song um, in the chorus in the second chorus you have the additional uh, synthesizers uh, first of all you know in the right speaker and then in the left speaker and I've always enjoyed that part of the song. It It's so subtle because it's quite low in the mix, but it's still audible. And, you know, it's it's exactly enough, basically on the level that you can hear it, but it's not too loud. It's not too overboarding. And I love that. You know, when, when bands do that or when artists do something like that, when they add certain little touches to an already established piece of a song and when it's done so well you know as is the case here it's yeah this is definitely one of my favorites on the album um du spielst god you're playing god seems to be about a person once again you know shifting perspectives because in um dein weg the previous song it basically was from, the, or it was written, or it seemed to have been written, from the perspective of the dominating part, the dominant person. Whereas in this case, I think it's the other way around. It's the inferior person, you know, addressing the other person that is dominant and that is dominating them actively, willingly. Du spielst immer wieder Gott mit deiner Macht. You keep or you keep playing God with your power, you know. You keep dominating my life and my choices, my thoughts, my everything with your power, with your dominance, with your, you know, words or actions or whatever. Once again, could be related to, you know, a relationship. That is why I said before we started listening to this album that it almost feels like a concept album because many songs, frankly speaking, on this album revolve around the same topics which can be a blessing and a curse. More about that when I, you know, um, when we finished the album as a whole and I'm gonna give my full album review. But once again, I love the song. And also, you know, the da, da, do, do, that um, the, the higher and really almost, yeah, I wouldn't call it operatic necessarily, but lyrical singing of Dero in the, let's call it post-chorus. Um, such a nice touch. And I don't know, feel free to tell me and educate me on that. I don't know if he actually ever had singing lessons. But if he didn't, he's just a great singer, you know. And hot take... Even though it's not so hot, maybe, but because everyone can hear it. From a purely technical, like singing, technically singing standpoint, Dero is the superior singer compared to Till Lindemann. I guess we all can agree on that, which does mean that Till Lindemann is, you know, worse. Not at all. That only means that the the approach to singing with Dero is way more technical and more you know focused on that whereas Till is a bit more dramatic a bit more um free 
you know, in his interpretation. He also has some vibrato here and there, but not to the extent of Diro, because he basically uses it um, constantly. And it sounds cool. That is why I also said, you know, the, the, the timbre of his voice, the, the tonal quality and the fundament of his voice would really allow for him to really sing something like swing or jazz music, I think. Uh, maybe like even doing a cover album uh, with Frank Sinatra songs. I could definitely see that fit, you know, giving it, them his own touch, you know. Um, yeah. I'm really, I'm still really sad. I'm going to talk about that more, you know, after we've listened to all the songs. But listening to this album, got to be honest makes me also still once again a bit sad that he isn't the singer in the band anymore and i will definitely give the new singer and we don't know who it is by now you know by the time of recording this we still don't know who it's gonna be if it's someone we all know if it's someone we don't know you know from the scene the musical scene Maybe it's not even someone German, you know. Maybe it's someone from, I don't know, Brazil, Japan. Who knows? Um, but I, I, re I really, really miss Dero as a singer in Umf already. And it's sad that they parted ways in a way because it's, it's a perfect fit. He is the perfect contrast to the once again the high frequency heavy guitars and just from a productional standpoint and i'm no expert i'm just you know someone who's really into music and who has sort of you know learned a few things about those you know that stuff but i'm nowhere near an expert when it comes to music production you know don't get a wrong impression here but i'm just trying to explain what i think in um yeah a comprehensible way i think you know and to me he was the perfect fit for this band and it's it's gonna be quite hard to replace him i mean on the one hand it's it's easy to replace him because you know once you have found a new singer you have a replacement okay so that's the easy part even though that itself might take a f days weeks months sometimes for bands and artists but the hard part is will the fans accept the new singer and will and which which way will they go will they go a completely different way tonally will it be someone who hasn't that low voice that Dero has will it be someone that sounds very close to Dero and in both scenarios, you know, will fans appreciate it? Because I can guarantee you, almost, 100%, that, you know, with, without being clairvoyant, of course, but we all know how people work, you know, human beings. There's going to be the person or the, that part of the audience of Umf that will say oh, he or she, they sound too much like Dero, dislike. And there's going to be the other half of people that will say, ah, it doesn't really sound like Dero used to sound like. That's like, you know, thumbs down for me, unsubscribing or whatever. Um, you will have both those things, I think. And there's no way around that, sadly. But we'll see. You know, uh, focusing on this album and this period of the band's history. Um, and, of course, you know, the album as a whole is a um, high point in their career. But, once again, I'm um, going to post that into the chat. Du spielst immer wieder Gott mit deiner Macht. You keep playing God with your power. Du spielst immer wieder Gott, der mich verlacht. You keep playing God who mocks me. Jemanden verlachen, to mock someone. Um, yeah, that's all I can say about the song. Uh, once again, you know, I think one of my favorites in terms of 
it being a hidden gem, a deep cut, a song that you don't really think of, maybe, you know, at first, or even like in second place when you think of all the songs on this album, but it's, to me, it's a standout song. Um, because it makes so many things right. Um, and once again, you know, uh, don't really want to comment on that because that is not my point of commenting that because that's a very personal decision. Uh, as some of you may have heard, is that Dero has uh, become like an active Christian believer um, which also goes against many oomph lyrics actually uh, from you know this time period for instance which is quite critical when it comes to organized religion not religion in like a general sense necessarily but the institution of the church you know Catholic church and everything so or using that as a metaphor maybe as it's meant in this case you know um, du spielst God, you're playing God as in you are too too dominant um, that is what I mean and uh, you know if he wants to do that of course that's uh, his thing um, it's said that you know they couldn't find an arrangement to still work together but that's what it is and you have to accept that I mean you know if he lives a happy life that way more power to him you know i've said that before on many occasions even though it makes many people and fans sad that that has also arguably i guess led to him you know leaving the band in the end um you have to accept that that is one part and the other part is that i personally um, or I'm, I'm focusing on spreading the good vibes you know I'm I'm a very I, I, I'd say I'm a quite tolerant person in the sense of you know even though that wouldn't be what m I want my life to be like you know the very religious um, life um, yeah if he wants to do that he's free to do that of course and as long as he doesn't harm people or as long as he doesn't want to you know uh, convert people to his religion or whatever um he should do what makes him happy you know and if it's not playing with oomph anymore that's sadly it but we have to accept that it's his you know it's totally all right to do that even though it's sad for me personally as well as i've said before i really really enjoy his singing and oomph it's the way it is. What can you do? Um, okay, let's move on. And that is what we can do to the next song, Dein Feuer, which we're going to play in three, two, one, go. Starting right away. <laughs> no intro. Oh yeah, those verses. I like the flow of the words. Dun da dun da dun da dam. Great pre-chorus. Once again, very Tom Heavy drum arrangement. 
almost like a little bit syncopating. I love that effect on the voice. I think there is like a little yeah, break coming up here, <laughs> I wanted to say. Nice little touch. Great ending as well. And stop. Now, don't get me wrong, but I think in comparison, it's a cool song. But it is one of the, in inverted commas, one of the weaker songs for me personally on the album. Um, I actually, this is one of those songs in which I actually prefer the verses over the chorus. That's not always the case, but in this case it is. You know, the chorus, typically oomph, great and all, but I love the dark and brooding quality of the verses uh, and also you know the, the sound but also you know dun -da -dun -da -dun -da -dum. Dun -da -dun -da -dun -da -dum. very percussive vocal line and rhythm of the vocals uh, which is really reminiscent of you know playing drums basically um, and playing certain tom patterns dun -da -dun -da -dun. You know, something like that, maybe. Um, which, of course, sort of also happens throughout the verses. You know, some toms being played there. Um, you know, an album is a gem when a weaker song sounds like that. Yeah, and you know, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's a weak song necessarily, but in comparison to the songs that we've heard so far, at least, you know, uh, judging from that. Uh, being fair, you know, in the continuation, the track listing of an album, um, I think it's one of the weaker songs, personally. But I still like it a lot. Um, and that once again goes to say that it's a strong album, you know, as a whole. Um, once again, a very strong lyrical eye. Mich führst du nicht in dein Feuer. You do not lead me into your fire. Mich führst du nicht hinters Licht. You do not lead me behind the light, which is the literal translation. Hinters Licht führen. Jemanden hinters Licht führen. To lead someone behind the light. Implying you won't deceive me. You know. Um, basically, the light being portrayed as knowledge and true truth you know uh, and wisdom and everything especially truth though and mich führst du nicht hinters Licht behind the light you do not lead me behind the light you won't you won't deceive me 
and um, distract me from the truth in that sense, you know. Um, so very, very strong lyrical eye, very rebellious in a way, and actually daring to be that way, which, you know, in some other songs, not really the case. But in this case, in this song, that is what it is. Um, Dein Feuer translates to your fire, by the way, for das Feuer, singular, die Feuer, plural, the fire. Ah. Dun, 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 dun. Love the, the that rhythm in the verse. Very, very unique once again. Very distinct for this song. So, yeah. With that being said, uh, the next song would technically be Ice Bear, even though we're not going to play that. Now, don't you worry. It's only a cover version. That's one reason. Um, it's not an original Umf song. It's a cover version of the band Grauzone. It's, it's a good cover, you know, very atmospheric and everything. And I like the song. But it's not included on all versions of this album. And because, you know, that is not the case, we're not going to listen to this song here. So we're going to skip that and we're going to continue with Der Strom. So I think that's once again... Yeah, I, I won't re reveal too much, but um, let's just listen to it, I think, you know. Shall we? I think we shall. So, drei, zwei, eins, play. Yeah, I love how you're, you're sucked into the song like that. Also, very playful drum rhythm. Comparatively quiet verse, very low bass, you know, very quiet, not gnarly at all. Love the chorus. Wow, 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 wow. Ha! Remember that. <laughs> nice little detail in addition to the sound palette. Yeah. One of the heaviest moments in early oomph, I think, with this style. I love that they end the way it began. That little lovely melody. Da, da, la, da, da, da. Ba, 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 da, and stop. 
That was Der Strom bei Umf. Such a short song. Barely over three minutes, actually. Uh, but, you know, it, it says everything it wants to say in that amount of time. So, totally legit, of course. Um, I think, in a way, you could argue that it's one of the more philosophical and thought-provoking songs, lyric-wise, on the album. And I'm not too sure what it necessarily is about, but I think it's about life and the inevitability inevitability the unausweichlichkeit the inevitability of the way life is you know it's the dream inventing itself es ist der traum der sich selbst erfindet es ist das wort das sich mir verschließt it's the word that closes itself to me you know that hides from me that eludes me Uh, es ist die Glut, die uns, bei, die uns beide entzündet, I think it is, yeah. It's the ember that ignites the two of us, or the both of us. Es ist der Strom, der für immer fließt. It's the stream, or current, or maybe power, in, in the sense of electricity. It's the electricity that runs or flows forever. Uh, but in this case, I think it's rather meant as the stream, as a current, as in like a river, or Uh, masses of water flowing a certain way. Um, it's the, the, the river of life, you know, I guess. Th I guess that is what it refers to. Um, also with uh, Die Erde wird sich weiterdrehen. The world will keep on turning. No matter what you do and how much you want it and if you get it or not, doesn't matter at the end of the day, because the world will keep on turning. Um, so it's a very, I guess you could argue it's also very, or particularly, it's interesting. I, I guess you could interpret it as a quite pessimistic song, but it can also be interpreted very optimistic, because even if you, or if something sad happened, you know that there's going to be a tomorrow. There's going to be a day after tomorrow. Uh, no pun intended, of course, you know. Roland Emmerich. Uh, and I like that ambiguity about the lyrics. And once again, I love the, the, the chord choices in this. And also this, yeah, you know, this uh, really raspy and low... Um, introduction getting sucked into the chorus once again the same way that we get or got sucked in at the beginning of the song you know slowly building and then boom it starts uh really really cool idea so der strom the current or the stream or der strom in the sense of electricity you know power but in this case I'd say it's rather meant as current or a stream, the river that flows, the river of life and existing, <laughs> existence. So, yeah, once again, maybe a deep cut, but I think, you know, and that is what I hinted at before we actually played the song. Um, it's one of my favorites on the album. Uh, hi, say anything. Uh, I'm really sorry, but that's not the topic today. And uh, I've made a few videos about the Bundeswehr. Um, if you want to find out more, like uh, I think top five facts about the Bundeswehr, for instance, the German military, uh, you can find that on my channel. But like I said before, that is not the topic of the stream. So I'm not really going to talk about that. I'm sorry. Um, I haven't really made too many videos about that topic. But that is one of the videos that I made. So if you want to check that out, uh, you can do that, of course. Uh, you can find that on my channel. Just type in uh, definitely Bundeswehr, for instance, and I think you will find that. Okay. Hope you don't mind. Um, so, es ist der Traum, der sich selbst erfindet. Um, es ist das Wort, das sich mir verschließt. Es ist die Glut, die uns beide entzündet. And I think Glut also got mentioned before. 
in one or two other songs, if I'm not mistaken. The Ember, the Glut. And no worries, say anything, you know, don't get me wrong. No worries for asking. Um, okay. So, uh, mini clips. Hi, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I've been learning German for a few years, and mich fühlst du nicht sounds backwards. Um, no, it's mich fühlst du nicht in das Licht. It, it's uh, you do not lead me behind the light. Mich fühlst du nicht in das Licht. Not fühlst. Fühlst would be feels. You know, you're feeling me uh, behind the light. Uh, but it's first. Uh, I know it can be done in music and poetry, but I think that would uh, be said like, du fühlst mich, uh, du fühlst mich nicht when speaking. Um, ba -da -ba 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 -bum. Sounds backwards. Du f mich fühlst du nicht. Ah, I, I know what you mean. Uh, you mean the word order, the syntax. Uh, that is true, actually. So, in common German sentences, you would start with the subject, of course, and in, this, in that case, it's du fühlst mich nicht. You do not feel me. You know, when you want to take that song, uh, or that sentence in specific. You would start with the subject, in most cases. Mich fühlst du nicht is quite poetic, that is true, quite abstract. It serves the purpose, you know, in terms of stressing the me, you do not feel me, by putting the me, mich, at the start of that phrase. So it serves a purpose, but in daily spoken German, you would express it in a normal way, subject, verb, object. You know, mich, uh, du fühlst mich nicht. So it's basically subject, verb, accusative, object, wen, mich, Du fühlst mich nicht. Um, so yeah, you're right. Good observation. Thumbs up for that. Uh, yeah, and Berangeri uh, basically said the same thing. Um, yeah, very true. And like I said before, uh, that is well observed. You know, well spotted. Um, okay. Let's continue with uh, Nichts. Ist kälter als deine Liebe. The, well, uh, fourth to last song, if that even is an expression. I know, uh, or you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Do we know what the song means? Let's find out. In drei, zwei, eins, play. This is such a strange beginning. And you're welcome, Mini Clips. And no worries. Hope I could be of help. Such a strange song. But cool. Yeah, adding a little bit of acoustic guitar. But a very, very dark way. Once again, the art of start and stop rhythms in dear. I only Bam, bada, bam, bam. There's another additional um, bass drum beat in there, which I haven't really noticed before. Interesting. Dum, da, da, dum, dum. Uh, 
also very swing like rhythm <laughs> so guttural so raw <laughs> This sounds very Nine Inch Nails, I think. These vocals here. Da, da. Very Trent Reznor. Etwas tief in mir, ich ausge. Dun dun. And system of a down, yeah. As well. And maybe even a little bit of John Frusciante in Red Hot Chili Peppers with his background vocals. Very underrated, I think. Oh, yeah. That's my highlight of the song. Love that. It's a really sustained note. You need to have certain a certain breath control for that, I think. Testament to singing abilities. <laughs> and stop. Nichts ist kälter als deine Liebe. Um, I this is one of the songs in which I really prefer the chorus of the verses. You know, it's the other way around with Dein Feuer, for instance, you know, in which I prefer the verses of the chorus, as I said before, but in this case, in this instance, I it's the other way around. Which goes not to say that I don't like the verses, but they they almost, as much as I like him doing that, as much as I like Diro really going that guttural and low and, you know, really evil sounding and raw, it, it sort of almost feels a little bit too much here for me, for my personal liking. Um, I still like it, but... Yeah, I mean, the chorus saves the song for me. Definitely. I mean, I also really like the addition of the acoustic guitar and adding that with electronics and heavy guitars, of course. And as, as I've said before, um, throughout the song, when it was playing, it's the first time that I really noticed that there is an additional bass drum beat. dum da da dum dum Every two, three times, you know. That, I mean, you know, uh, at the at the start of that phrase. And I've never really noticed that before, I don't think. So this was the first time that I really noticed that. And I love when that happens, when there is a song. I don't know if you can relate. But when there is a song that you have known for almost like 20 years in this case... And you still find n new nuances, nuances, details when you listen to the song, you know, on headphones, for instance, and really actively. Not just hearing a song, but listening to a song. I love when that happens. And this is a good example of that. So that definitely made the song even more special to me. Even though I would say it's not one of the you know, I, w I wouldn't really call it, I w or let me put it this way. I wouldn't mention this song in my top five of, of the album. But it's a good song. Uh, it's a really solid song. 
um, but I prefer other songs on the album as a whole. That's that. Uh, the title, by the way, is Nothing is Cooler or Colder, rather, than Your Love. Nothing is colder than your love. Nichts ist kälter als deine Liebe. So, that is a quite harsh thing to say. <laughs> In a way, ram ram, isn't it? <laughs> I think it is. Um, Nichts ist kälter als deine Hand. Nothing is colder than your hand. Nimm dein Herz, du bekommst es... Yep, sorry. Nimm dein Herz, du bekommst es wieder. Take your heart, you'll get it back. Etwas tief in dir hat mich ausgebrannt. Something deep inside of you has burned me out. So it, once again, you know, recurring topic of toxic love, toxic relationship and one partner being way too dominant. And, you know, love, not in a positive, but in a negative way, harmful love. Um, yeah, dangerous territory, you know, <laughs> um, definitely dangerous territory. So uh, once again, another cool topic, even though it's it revolves around the same topic once again. Fire and ice. Yes. It's interesting, yeah. It's basically, you know, from in terms of the elementals that are mentioned on this album, it's the contrasting song to Dein Feuer, which is your fire. And this one is rather about the coldness or the ice, you know. Um, because, I mean, you know, love and emotions and whatever can be either too hot or too cold. And you need to find the balance that is basically what all these songs basically yeah more or less say or are about i think you know having lost the balance and one part of that stuff to dominating way too much so hmm we'll see interesting song though uh so let's continue with Diesmal wirst du sehen. Berangerie adds, and both are destructive, yes. Very destructive. Um, in the wrong hands and, you know, the wrong person doing that. And in general, of course. Diesmal wirst du sehen. Let's play this one in. Drei, zwei, eins, play. Sorry, a little bit of a delayed start. Love that riff. Also, once again, you know, a little... Nice little rhythmic play there. It's a nice little vocal line. Because you're cold, once again, coldness. And great singing once again. I love when the chorus hits. Because it once again makes use of that little, you know, the rhythmic play. Love that. The interplay between fast and slow and, you know, 
Dynamics. And once again, a little more like of a tom tom pattern. Tom tom, tom pattern. Tom Petty. Boom. Love it. Also, I'm going to talk about that in a second. And stop. Okay, diesmal wirst du sehen bei Umf. Do I want to say it? I think I want to say it. One of my favorite choruses on the album. Everything about it is so cool i think the way it gets you know it sucks you in first of all you know the pre-chorus and then the little break and then the little diddle -diddle -diddle -boom. uh the this little guitar lick you know right in front of the chorus um with a little effect over it da -da 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 -boom. and the way it you know really hammers you into the chorus and you can't escape it it's it's nice nice funneled en energy if that makes sense you know it's it's really dynamic i love that when they use dynamics you know um quiet and loud slow and fast those things you know rhythmic or like hectic and in this case you know the chorus is a very good example for that in many ways uh the the instruments you know they are really pro propelling the song forward and it's not really like a counterpoint i guess in that sense but it it the the, the lyrics the lyrics the vocals and the vocal melody is really simple and really this time around heavily relying on stressed vowels Diesmal wirst du sehen. You know, uh, I, A, I, U, E. That's basically, <laughs> I, A, I, U, E. Uh, that's basically uh, the vowels that really play an important role here. And they are prolonged, they are stressed. And it's a nice, it's an extremely awesome sounding contrast to the rather hectic instruments underneath that vocal delivery and i love the combination of that it's so powerful it's so it, it really grasps me you know as a listener it really bang, really want, makes my head bang and you can still follow along you know it's not too overwhelming or or um overboarding and distracting even not at all quite the opposite so it's a really clever choice arrangement wise um you know in terms of combining the instrument 
section with the vocals uh, in a very smart way. So that is, therefore, I think it's one of my favorite choruses on the album. And there are lots of strong choruses on the album. Uh, you know. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Diesmal wirst du sehen. This time you will see. Almost uh, meant as a uh, warning, you know. <laughs> you better behave. This time you will see. This time you will believe me, you know, in that sense. Um for sehen, to see, look or watch, depending on the context. Diesmal is this time. Eddie's little stack. Hi, Eddie. Thanks for tuning in. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, feel free to follow along for the rest of the album, the remainder of this, because we have two more songs to go. Uh, I'm basically talking about the song Diesmal wirst du sehen at the moment. By the way, gotta have to make sure. Yeah, it's barely, it's like the last song on here that you can still see, so I have to scroll down now. Um, really happy that I... Um, thought of it. Yeah, like this, maybe. Okay. Um, what do you think about the song? What a voice, yeah, it's it's really impressive. Gotta say, you know, I think when I think of German singers that I know, like not personally, but that I, you know, know as artists, um, I think I would even go as far to say that Dero, previous singer of Umf, is one of the most recognizable voices in German rock and metal. And in general, you know, when it comes to German singers, I think his tone, his delivery, his timbre, his vibrato, his way or feel for rhythms within vocal lines and everything, vocal melodies, it's just, it's incredible. Especially for this type of music, I think, the more expressive, the more dramatic and mysterious, you know, dynamic style of music uh, in that sense so I'm really 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 a big fan of his delivery um, in general all right second to last song guys uh, Teeth in Deer whoops uh, we're gonna listen to this right now in drei zwei Oh, sorry, I have to, uh, <laughs> wrong start. Uh, I have to actually post that into the chat real quick before I forget. Before I forget it. Great song. Um, anyway, uh, Zen, yeah. To see, to look, to, wa to watch. Didn't really want to forget that, so. But now, it's time for Tief in Dir. Second to last song on the album in 3, 2, 1, play. Well, Spanish sounding, you know. Like that little percussive moment there without anything else and that melody is cool also really nice rhythm work once again Da 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 da. Also allowing more space in between the riffs.
Ta da ta tam. There it is again. Da 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 pam. Ta da 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 ta pam. You know, little deviations from the overall rhythm. Ba da da da. Ta da da ta dam. Halt mich fest für immer. Bam. Also, you know, the layered harmonies in a way, like a low singing, high singing combined. Really effective in this chorus. Ba -da -da. And stop. Teeth in dear. Teeth in dear. Ah, love it. Once again, you know, stressing the E. Teeth in dear. You know, he's overly stressing it for the sake of, you know, um, having a great line in the song. But when you take the term teeth deep in... German, in daily German, that is, you would still use a long E, long German E, not to be confused with the English E, which is uh, another letter, but, you know, it's, in this case, it's T-I-E-F in English, Tief, deep, and there is a diphthong in this term. A diphthong is a fixed combination of vowels that basically create a unique sound. In this case, it's the EA combination. And even though it's two vowels, only one of them gets pronounced. In this case, it's the E. And the E that follows after it is basically a prolonging vowel. So it indicates that the E is pronounced long. It's not tiff, but it's teeth. Right? So whenever you see ee -E in German, in pretty much all cases, I can't think of an exception from the top of my head, but I... Yeah, basically in all cases, it means that the E is long. little mnemonic for you guys, maybe. Um, that uh, is interesting to know, I think, about this term and this diphthong excuse me um linguistically speaking so yeah teeth word that till frequently uses yeah um yeah once again playing with rhythms you know teeth and deer and then hitting in the chorus um 
once again great melody great song uh, and it's it has a nice flow to it and it works great as a second to last song as the last song that is really like openly heavy and fast on the album as a whole and that also leads me to another aspect that I really like about this album which is the sequencing which is the order of the tracks which is an art in itself because you know maybe it's not too obvious for the casual listener but when you think about it when you listen to an album from start to finish which nine out of ten people don't do these days i don't think sadly um but that's just my take on it anyway uh if you do that you will notice that you know if the songs were in a different order the album as a whole as a continuum of music may work differently and maybe not as strong even or stronger in some case you know when the sequencing isn't done perfectly or you know well thought out but in this case i think yeah it's a great sequencing it's fast songs it's then you know followed by slower songs um and a few more you know unique tracks woven in between so overall it's a great great sequencing on this album um yeah teeth teeth and deer is a deep in you or within you you know immer dann wenn du einsam bist whenever you are lonely wird dich mein herz befreien my heart will set you free immer wenn dich die angst zerfrisst Whenever fear eats you up, werd ich tief in dir sein. I'll be deep inside of you. Tief in dir. Deep inside or within you. So, it's a very, very uplifting song, actually. I mean, you could also argue, once again, it could be ambiguous. Uh, you could argue that it's it's a really creepy song because there is like an inner voice that is saying to you i'm always within you no matter what happens but you could also interpret it in a positive way in the sense of you know i'm your conscience i'm your willpower i'm your um will to live will to act <laughs> if that makes sense you know so it you could interpret it both ways so it's it's really really cool when you think about it to me it always seemed to be more on the positive side of things but i you know also because of the the line immer wenn ich der wahnsinn küsst werde ich tief in der sein whenever or every time madness is kissing you literally speaking great great expression actually very poetic immer wenn dich der wahnsinn küsst immer meaning you know whenever you are overcome by madness i will deep i will be deep within you and help you out of that situation i will be your guiding light in that sense you know it's that is what i get out of this so i've always interpreted this song as a rather positive one but of course you could also interpret it the other way around and that leads us to the last song on the album im licht and yeah i could say a few things about the song and i will but first of all we're gonna listen to it i think so last song last time im licht in drei zwei eins play also a little delayed start because the last second ish of tief and dear rang out i'm sorry I have to pay more attention to that in future album listening parties. Bam, bam, bam. I always enjoyed this mood. It's really night e, you know, night ish. And also this tak 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 tak, this percussive element, always reminded me of um, table tennis balls. Tak tak tak. Maybe it is. I don't know. Tuck, 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 tuck. But it really sounds like that. Very unique. 
once again. I also really like the rhythm of this song overall. Very abstract, almost progressive. Bam, 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 bam. I love the guitar, you know, the reverby, echoey guitar here. I think it's a guitar. And also the play with the channels once again. Down, down, down. Great strings as well. Very subtle. We're getting chills. Love this song. And once again, glued, amber. Oh, this is always so chilling. Basically ASMR. <laughs> wow. I really like this was even though it's so short, but the ending to this song always you know, I don't know if you can see it, but I, I goosebumps. And th throughout the song as a whole. Um I love the vibe of this song. The atmosphere is so rich and deep. Especially in the verses, you know, and the beginning of the song. And you know, also the strings, you know, and it being a huge part in all of that. It's not even, you know, the chorus itself is really, really cool as well. And, it, you know, defin definitely the climax in a way. But... It's also the verses that really get to me, tonally speaking. Um, really immerseful. Is that a term? Immersing um, and mesmerizing. It's, it's yeah. It's I love this song, and it's, it's the perfect closer for the album. You know, it's it's it leaves you with a really uncertain and moody feeling and and it's it's it adds another fla flavor to the album um being a little bit ballady without being ballady really um yeah always one of my favorites uh always been
and one of the songs that I could remember, you know, almost like best out of all of them that I haven't heard for or in a long time. So, Im Licht, In the Light. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Another great song. And I love how... Should I put it? Um, breakable, it sounds, you know, especially the beginning, very, very smooth and very, very subtle and very, um, you know, you feel like you have to be very careful listening to the song in order to not to break something or to destroy the mood that you're hearing, you know, you don't do anything else, you just listen to the song. That is one of those songs to me and I love that it's so intriguing and once again you know dum 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 the this v rhythm this rhythmic pattern so intriguing so unique so recognizable and uh, interesting lyrics once again very thought-provoking and i'm not too sure if i know what this is all about but it definitely you know it, it evokes of course it, it addresses the light and the night das licht und die nacht and um, basically the lyrical eye addressing someone else kannst du dich im licht erkennen can you see or recognize yourself in the light fühlst du wie die nacht regiert do you feel how the night rules Lass in dir das Feuer brennen, let the fire burn within you, bis sich deine Angst verliert, until your fear is losing itself, meaning it's, it's gone. Puh. Kannst du dich im sorry, kannst du dich im Licht erkennen? Can you see or recognize yourself in the light? Fühlst du, wer die Nacht bezwingt? Do you feel how uh, do you feel who defeats the night? Lass dich von der Glut verbrennen, and there it is again, die Glut, the Ember. Let the Ember burn you, bis sie deine Angst verschlingt, until it, the Ember, devours your fear. You know, it's, it sort of is, you know, come to the dark side, we have cookies, <laughs> I guess. It's, it's basically luring, or maybe it is trying to lure the addressed person onto the dark side, which is seemingly the good side. Maybe not. And then also saying, du gehörst dir nicht. You don't own yourself. You know, you are not your own owner. Maybe implying that you don't have free will, even if you think you have. At the end of the day, you can't escape the dark lord. You know, the man who shall not be named or... Uh, you know, Sauron or I don't know, <laughs> uh, something like that. Yeah, interesting though. It's das Licht, by the way, das Licht singular, die Lichter, plural, the light. Whew. Okay, very, very cool. Last part. And maybe, you know, uh, and Berangeré basically, um, Depeche mode -esque. yeah. It definitely has a certain Depeche Mode sound to it, which I love. Gonna see them live this year, by the way, um, for the first time. Uh, really, really psyched about that. Um, yeah, it, it's sort of unresolved. You don't know what it exactly is about. Like, you don't really get um, approval for one interpretation or the other i don't think at the end of the day but it, it leaves you thinking about it you know and, and reflecting on it and i i like that when songs do that and to me this song and it's that adds to the mysteriousness uh the tonal mysteriousness and the uh the lyrical mysteriousness the mystery behind im Licht gonna post the lyrics here and then I'm gonna proceed on to my album review what do I think about the album as a whole some of you 
or I guess most of you have already or already got a uh, a good impression on on uh, my overall thoughts. I think. Um, but last line. <coughs> Um, okay, this was Wahrheit oder Pflicht by Umf. Their eighth album. Once again, it's ridiculous when you think about it that is, it's only their with their eighth album that they really had a breakthrough, musically speaking and career speaking, uh, or career wise. It's it's crazy. Um, also, you know, come to think of it, Zeit released last year by Rammstein, 2022 the time of this recording it's 2023 early january that was their eighth album and they pretty much had success from some might say even the first album i would argue maybe even more with the second album sehnsucht but you know totally different career um even though umf are really well known internationally speaking you know within the community within uh, that scene and people that like that style of music Especially, for instance, you know, in Russia, or uh, they are really big, I think, um, as far as I can tell. So it's they definitely have earned their place as an influential band and a successful band. And I'm really happy that they did with this album because, you know, it's if you like Rammstein, if you like similar bands, Eisbrecher, I think you know it's th to me. I've always thought about you know of it like being the holy trinity of Neue Deutsche Härte, to me, basically is Rammstein, Umf, and Eisbrecher. Those three bands. And I wouldn't even go to say, you know, it's my favorite genre, because it's not, but I, I like it. But it's those three bands, definitely, they have something special to them. Um, and each of these bands is special in their own right. They are similar in style, but they each have certain special traits that I like. For instance, with Umf, it's, you know, Dero's voice, of course, which really stands out, which sounds really well refined and just thought out. Um, yeah, Eisbrecher. Um, I'm not a, I, you know, I'm not an expert when it comes to them yet. I know a few songs, but that's about it. Um, but of what I do know is, yeah, I quite like them. Um, also, very thought-provoking songs here and there. Mega Hats, yeah, basically the pre uh, predecessor to uh, Eisbrecher, if you will, I guess. Um, even though I think they still exist, not too sure about that because I'm uh, not an expert when it comes to that. But uh, I think Alex, the singer of Eisbrecher, was in Mega Hats before, so. Um, yeah, it's a it's a different story though. Uh, anyway, uh, Wahrheit oder Pflicht bei Umf. Um, I really really like this album <laughs> from start to finish. I mean, I may have said that one or two songs are a bit weaker here and there in comparison, but even the weaker songs for me personally, you know, Dein Feuer being a good example, still a strong song, still a good song, and solid. If you really enjoy the single ingredients of the sound of Umf, which is the heavy, really, really heavy and distorted guitars and loud guitars, you know, really high frequency, heavy guitars, um, the pounding drums with sometimes really, really, really creative and playful, but mostly really song serving, stomping rhythms. Um, gnarly bass here and there very you know forefront mixed synths and a very elegant and very versatile and dynamic singing by Dero you know all those ingredients um, if you enjoy this or le let's say most of that you will definitely have a great time with this album that being said I think one of the or what people I guess could be criticizing about this is that and I do get that 
even though you know the songs themselves are quite dynamic throughout them you know throughout like the verses and the chorus and the arrangement in itself it's still you know the, this this album doesn't really have a ballad when you think about it not really like a proper ballad all the way through does that make this album worse for me personally no but i if people were to criticize that i could understand that criticism that is what i want to say you know the overall dynamic of the album and once again that is another point that some people will say it's one of their strong suits you know a strong suit of the band and other people will say the exact same opposite about that very aspect all the songs arguably sound very similar to one another but that is once again you know you can either say that's very positive or you can say oh no that's totally negative for me personally because i'm about versatility i'm about um you know dynamic and i'm about um yeah different sounds and not hearing the same over and over again i'm torn when it comes to that most of the time but I'm also of the opinion that as long as it sounds cool, you know, ACDC being a good example, or the prime example maybe even, as long as it sounds cool and it's, as long as it still has some uniqueness to it and some great melodies, great hooks, great harmonies, nothing wrong with songs sounding very similar to one another, I don't think. You know? That's also like th what makes the trademark sound of a band. A recognizable sound and you don't get that if you have like each song in your discography sounding completely different to all the others so it's a double-edged sword I think um, that yeah but I once again that is a legit criticism that some people may bring forward in the negative sense but you can also interpret that as a strong suit of the album that depends on your personal taste I think and how you rate that and evaluate that but um overall Augen auf, i mean it's it's even hard for me to really pinpoint to certain songs that i that really stand out as i said before in terms of hidden gems i would go with tausend neue lügen du spielst gott der strom yeah i mean I could also mention Diesmal wirst du sehen, tief in dir, im Licht, you know. It's so many great songs. It's uh, it. And once again, Brände Liebe. I think one of my favorite Umf songs of all time. Im Licht, the last song, so mysterious, so unique sounding. And the closest we come to you know, having a ballad on the album, even though, once again, it isn't a ballad because of the chorus, the heavy chorus and everything. It's a half ballad, I guess you could argue, but... The versatility of Devo's voice is just amazing. I can listen to him every day and never get bored. Berangeré says, yes, and I feel the same, to be honest. Um, he, it's also his... He has a warmth in his in his voice, I think, which is really attracting, attractive and attracting. Um and really keeping you on track and other voices yeah you know other other singers even though they may sound great technically speaking they don't really have that and it's very captivating the way he sings and the way he knows to use his voice and the way he knows what his voice is capable of and how it can bring the best addition to the instrumentation of the songs you know very professional, very, very experienced, very um, expressive, very cool. Once again, um, yeah. Okay, I think that's basically what I can tell you about the album. Um, I think most of you watching this right now will also feel the same, I guess. Um, it will always 
be a special album for me personally not just because of the time when i found out about this because 2003 2004 was around the time i really began listening to heavy music for the first time especially 2003 with linkin park meteora and evanescence fallen you know i was born in 91 so i was 12 years old in 2003 which was around the time that i really got into heavier music um including rammstein including nightwish including die ärzte including umf and other bands of course but this album and especially augen auf being played so often on music television back in the day in germany and the music video being really intriguing visually speaking it really yeah, it really got me it really 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 made me want to listen to the song over and over and over and over and see the video over and over and over and everything you know it's it was I don't know how, how many times I've listened to that song in my life. <laughs> it's um, it's crazy. And also, you know, Brende Liebe, another song that doesn't get old, which to me is a sign of great art. If, Of course, it's also very subjective, yes, but to me, great art has a timeless character to it. it, it you can listen to it quite often and even regularly, maybe even daily, uh, or like multiple times a day, even more so. Um, and you still won't get tired of it. Um, what I also really enjoyed, on a like from a personal standpoint, is that in Nichts ist kälter als deine Liebe, I for for the first time I noticed another like additional bass drum beat in the pattern that I I th don't think I've ever noticed before in the chorus. Uh, and there was something similar happening in Im Licht. I haven't mentioned that yet, but uh, there was like a little really subtle sequence, like like synthesizer sound in the chorus. I think it was the third chorus or like maybe the second chorus. Uh, first of all, on the left, like first on the right side and then on the left side. And um, also, you know, that is that was also strong suit. And very well thought out arrangements. The arrangements on this album, wow. And playing with, you know, the stereo field panning, you know, left, right, right, left, ping pong, um, ad libs here and there, even a few guitar solos. Yeah. I mean, and that's basically the last thing I'm gonna say about this album. I think, you know, if you were to release this album today, it may not have the impact that it had back in the day with, you know, Augen auf, because it was something fresh, something new, something additional to Rammstein, for instance. Even though, as I've said before, Umf came before Rammstein, but they became successful after Rammstein already were successful. So it's interesting. Um, in that sense but even though that may not have or that may not happen that way these days because we have heard everything by now <laughs> at least it feels like to me and hardly ever there's anything new that really stands out in the music scene these days which is sad in a way but I guess that's the way it is it will still be a strong album it will still be a strong album this day, you know, even if it were released now. Because of the songs. Once again, pretty timeless. Yeah. So, Wahrheit oder Pflicht by Umf. Very strong album in my book. I hope you uh, enjoyed this live stream, this album listening party. Uh, because I surely enjoyed listening to this album for the first time in full from front to back in quite a while in a few years actually and i could remember way more than i thought i would um which also you know speaks for the songs as opposed to against them <laughs> um and for my memory as well which is cool to know uh that it still works yay 
a little bit. Thank you for this listening party. I love this album. So excited to listen to it like that and have your take on it. Thank you very much for seeing that, Bérangerie. And of course, thanks to every one of you guys out there uh, for watching, for being interested in these types of album listening parties. I'm going to do one of these every now and then. Not only for German bands, maybe, but also for other bands. And basically then doing it the other way around. Translating English song titles and English lines out of songs to German and explaining my translation and what's interesting about the German translation from a language learning point of view here and there. So uh, I've done a few album listening parties before this, for instance, to uh, the Ghost album Impera, the most recent one, which is awesome, to Alter Bridge, Pawns and Kings. I've done one for Reise, no, not Reise, Reise, Rosenrot by Rammstein for Sehnsucht by Rammstein um, and a few more I think yeah so thank you very much for your interest and for your patience for sticking around because that is greatly greatly appreciated and I don't take that for granted so thank you have a nice day. If you enjoyed this video, of course, feel free to let me know by leaving a like, by sharing the video, and by subscribing to the channel. And make, make sure to check out the video description if you want to uh, for more links to my socials and support options for the channel, such as patreon.com slash definitely. Also a great way to help the channel and, um, yeah, to help me keeping this going, you know. Because all of this, of course, also... Um, it's not about the, not just about the time, but it's also about, um, yeah, some you know investments that I made and everything, and uh, it the uh, the energy that it costs, of course, not just physically, but also um, you know everything basically. So you want to do you know what I want to say with this? I hope maybe not. Maybe I don't know. Anyway. Um, Thanks once again. Highly appreciate it. And uh, have a great day, great night, great morning, great afternoon, whatever. Wherever you are around the globe. And see you next time around. Definitely. Thanks for watching. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye bye.